Hello, I'm Alex Orr. Welcome to the Conservation Commission's Land Management Subcommittee. We have posted an agenda for today's meeting, and we're going to start with a discussion of forest management and limit that to carbon credits, then talk about hunting on conservation land, then talk about dog registration and other issues, and we're going to run till 1.30. So with us, we have Dave Zomack from the town, Aaron Schock from the town, uh, Michelle Lobb from the commission, and Eric um, Bruce Sed Stedman, excuse me, from the commission. So with that, um, I'm going to try and queue up forest management. I did send out to the committee uh, the verbiage that we had reviewed on 1121 of 23 with some highlighted text uh, which we need to go through today, but the subject, the main subject is the statement that commission will not sell carbon credits on lands already under its care, custody and control. And um, a member of the committee uh, questioned that sentence. And um, um, we're going to, so we're gonna talk, focus on that sentence. And then after we get done with that, clarify uh, some other language we just highlighted. And Aaron, if you want to bring that up, that would be great. So Michelle, you had the concern about carbon credits. So why don't you start? Yeah, so I made this, thanks Alex. I made this comment like throughout the review of this over the last year. And um, I just think that it, it's not a completely informed with the current uh, pace and development of carbon offsets. And I'm just suggesting that we either strike it um, and leave it out rather than make this like blanket prohibition on it or leave reference to the commission will only consider eligible lands um, consistent with the guidance of like the DCR and Mass Audubon so that because their guidance and research and the process and the market and how it's even implemented is changing very rapidly and quicker than this document would, I think I would just like to lean on the researchers and, you know, approve markets. And, and I think the primary concern about this was that um, putting a credit on conserved land doesn't meet like adequate, um, the principles of the offset, which is called additionality, which is that you're actually protecting more than would be protected otherwise. But that is, has been recognized as a um, challenge and a problem with the markets. And it's now incorporated into the guidance that Mass Audubon and DCR have. So you can't, you can't double dip anymore. I mean, they, they recognize that. So I am just saying that rather than us in our, you know, limited understanding of how this is progressing and how it's working, put this in there that we either just take it out. And if it needs to be revisited, that's going to be a conversation for a later commission or just lean on the experts here and just reference that it will, you know, follow suit with what that guidance is at that current time. Okay, thank you. So um, Michelle did give me the link um, to the document she just cited and I um, spent some time with it and I wrote up some notes, which I distributed. And uh, most recently I, I sent them to all of you a couple of days ago and again this morning attached to an email to Dave. And uh, one of the things that um, that document does is it presents carbon uh, projects in, a, in lay terms. It's very readable um, and it lays out uh, in the table of contents uh, chapters on uh, things to be concerned about, what's best for municipalities. It's a very nice document that was done by Mass Audubon in 2021. And I see DCR's name associated with it, but it wasn't quite clear how they fit. Probably doesn't matter. And in, in the document that I circulated, 
um, I just lifted language from from that Audubon document that says that 5,000 acres is a sweet spot or a good place to begin. I didn't invent any words. I just lifted them and put them in a uh, an attachment. It's a one pager. Hold on, I got to close my window. Got a bunch of got a bunch of leaf blowers going. So um, this is a matter for the town, really, because we don't we have about two thousand acres, and that document says that if you have three thousand acres or less, it 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 going to be it may not be cost effective because you're going to have to hire a third party reviewer to come in every five years. And it says that the money you get from the trust could, could from carbon trading could be put in a trust to pay for that third party review. So there's a good chance that a we don't have enough land to meaningfully participate. Uh, two, the amount of money that the town would get would get eaten up in consulting fees. And it would also mean that somebody some staff time on Dave's staff would have to spend time babysitting the carbon project. So that's a, an administrative decision that Dave's got to consider. Um, and I'm, I'm just reciting what that document said. I wanna be clear and not misunderstood. I'm not necessarily expressing a point, my point of view. I'm reviewing as I did in the paper, what the document that Michelle referenced says. There's also a section, so that's point number one, is the amount of land we have and the document saying that you really need about 5,000 acres to start. The second is it, it goes through the pros and cons as Michelle alluded. Um, there are arguments on both sides and uh, one is the benefit side of uh, and then the other one, the other side is um, uh, that there has to be an additive benefit. You can't take a piece of land which otherwise would not be uh, altered and, or a piece of land that is already protected and simply be neutral on increasing its carbon sequestration. There has to be a benefit, they have to be increasing um, so um, I think the thing talked about one of the risks for municipalities is storm damage. And if your forest gets blown down by a hurricane or something like that, um, you've got an issue. And I don't want to dwell on that, but our land is already protected. And this is me now, but our land is already protected. It has no risks. There's not going to be houses on it. There aren't going to be roads in it. And um, so it's not quite clear whether the benefits of taking on a carbon trading program and increasing our ability to store carbon is in the mix. Yeah, Dave, your hand was up Fix first. Yeah. <clears throat> couple of thoughts or comments, uh, Alex, and I am by no means, I do not know all that much about this. So um, these, these are just somewhat random. But um, the first, first um, thing to put out there is that in years past, and we never really looked at this with any, any kind of true focus or, you know, staff and in, uh, time investment of staff. But when we did at least talk about it a few years ago, there was consideration of bundling the town land. In other words, we, we the town, with conservation land, watershed protection land, water supply protection land, et cetera, we're probably in the, I think we're easily over 5,000. We may be closer to 6,000 acres in land. So in, in, in various towns. So so there is an opportunity to bundle if we ever thought that was something to benefit the town and and all of that. So I'll just put that out there. Um, 
The second thing for me, our question was, although the land is protected under Article 97, and this is a question for the group, I guess, what's to say a conservation commission 10 years from now doesn't say, we want to actively cut forest land that the conservation commission owns and controls? Is there, is, doesn't that kind of undermine the whole the whole notion that it's, yes, the land is protected from development, but the trees aren't protected from being cut. So again, I I understand that, you know, with carbon credits, you, you know, this whole challenge of land that's already, quote, protected, but I use the word protected in, in quotes because it's protected from development. There's no real protection from cutting the trees. So I get I get the conundrum we're in here. You know, if you're adding more land to permanent preservation, that's that's a way to 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 utilize carbon credits. But I'm I'm still stuck a little bit on there's no guarantee the trees will still be standing 10 years from now or 20 years from now or or 50 years from now. So can somebody help me understand that piece of it? Yeah, I'll get to you in a minute, Michelle. Um first thank you for Clarifying the bundling, it, it didn't occur to me. The only numbers I know is how much conservation land we have. So, okay, that's clarified that we do have over 5,000 acres. Uh, on the carbon and cutting, this policy says it's not in our, it's not our objective to harvest timber or firewood. Um, but in the carbon deal, it's my understanding, once you sell the carbon, you don't own it. And um, so you are held accountable for um, maintaining the amount of carbon you're sequestering. You can, it doesn't always have to be the same trees, but the sum total of the sequestration mm -hmm. is being the same. So it's an accounting game. Yes, no, I, I got but, that. But you, you don't own the carbon, therefore you don't own the trees. Yeah. Before Michelle, Michelle, before Michelle jumps in, one one other quick thought and and I'll put it I guess this might be to Michelle's point is I I like the rest of this document in general like generally the commission will take a passive role in the management of forest lands I guess my question is if the economics and and whatnot of carbon um credits is is fluid and changing and and evolving why put in such a blanket statement or why not either remove it altogether or put it in as something a little more general? If, you know, the commission may in the future consider carbon credits, if seen as advantageous to, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, okay. uh, got where you're going, something like that. Yep. Why do the blanket elimination of it? Michelle? Yeah, um, same, same echoing Dave's, but also, uh, you know, consistent with goals and mission, whatever, and also with the guidance of like these locally specific programs. But I just wanted to proffer an example of when this could be advantageous to the town and fit within a carbon offset is something like, um, you know, tree disease. And this is going to happen more in the future, like pine damage, especially red pines, like even age red pines are just all dead. The town has no money to manage that for anything better than that. So they, they're not sequestering carbon. They're not pro providing much wildlife habitat other than, you know, insect food for birds or something. But that would be a potential situation where it might be viable for, you know, and think in the future when we're gonna have more insect outbreaks and more tree disease and damage. And okay, there might so be the, the policy does- I wasn't great. done, Alex. I'd like to continue mm -hmm. my thought, thank you. I'm trying so, to move us along so we can get this done in a half hour. Okay, well, I've been commenting on this for a year. And so if this is my place to do it, I'd like to finish the thought. So this, one of the evolutions of the carbon offset is not just carbon sequest, like carbon credit. It's also to do with habitat management and putting something into early successional habitats that first sequester the carbon and then store it. So I'm just making a point that the entire program and the economic program is getting into a more nuanced situation than these big international 
credit buying things, which I think was sort of where this statement came from. So that is why I think that it should be attached to the greater guidance and not be such a blanket prohibition. Thanks. By the way, I I don't have uh, I don't have an objection to striking it. I don't have a an objection to um, changing the wording at all, and I don't want to be misunderstood in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce. I agree with striking the sentence and leaving it more uh, open to doing other things in the future. Um, I did have some questions about, uh, I mean, it looks like the, under the existing restrictions section, it talks about conservation restrictions as a, uh, as a problem. So those might reduce your 6,000 acres to less, even if you bundle. Mm. Um, don't know who the buyers are, it says you should know who your buyer is first. Well, that's a, from what we've said, that's a very fluid situation. So I'm in favor of striking the sentence and letting other people work on it uh, in the future. Okay. So we have, uh, just moving us along, I got 1223. Um, this, this management thing is not about all town land. It, the policy is not about all town land. So hopefully the 2000 acres is, accurate given this policy um and i understand we have more than that if somehow they were bundled would the so that there might be discussion on the part of the commission how about if we rather than strike it um modify the sentence to um along the lines that michelle or well michelle said strike it but along the lines that dave was talking to kind of fuzz it up Yeah, Bruce. Oh, I was on a different topic. Sorry. Yeah, so the, this subject would, when it comes time before the commission, this would be a good topic to talk to them about. Um, on the other hand, if we strike it, it won't probably occur to most of them. And I, I'm happy either way, actually. The striking it <laughs> brings this conversation to a close. Uh, coming up with some words takes more time. Um, um, I'm okay with sending it, not letting the perfect get in the way of the good, so that we can get something to the commission for them to talk about. Um, what's your what What's your desire? I think we should, in the version we have, put it a strike through so they see that we are considering striking it, and then that will enable a conversation. That's an idea. Michelle? I mean, I could just spout off a sentence right now if you want to write something in and you can change words as needed. Does that get us where we're going quicker? Yeah, sure. Um, so how about the con the commission will consider carbon credits on lands, blah, 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 um, um, if, if consistent with and what do we have missions and policies of the commission and consistent with current guidance from regional what are we going to say i mean the mass out of on dcr article exists in 2021 i don't know what what our reference should be going forward how about statewide guidelines sure I'd go for that. Dave? What was the, did you say the commission may consider? Yeah. I like the word may. Yeah, yeah may is good. That's fine. I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. So we've got Aaron's language and then the suggestion that we put a, a strikeout through the existing sentence so that people can see that. Um, well, I I drop that. I would go with just including this as as the draft and see what they say. Okay, Aaron, do you want to add to the beginning of what you wrote that the that the subcommittee is considering substituting the following so that it's clear? Well, but they never saw this before, so. And then while she's doing that, um, I made some changes uh, where it used to say commission, I put in director of conservation and development um, mm -hmm.
because the commission doesn't enter into contracts and down below um it would be fault of the director to create and maintain an inventory mm -hmm. and um and the commission would need to review and approve all those before any contracts were signed yeah so in what go, if we're, if we're getting to the point where we're happy, I would ask that we eliminate all the yellow highlighting. Right. But I, I have a couple of questions when we have a minute. Yeah. Uh, three quick things. It struck me at the beginning that having the salvage be the very first thing it just was off putting um, since that's kind of a, a secondary issue. I'd, I'd put it at the end of the sentence personally. Um, I wondered about, I felt like I understood from previous meetings down there near the end, it says all forest cutting plans are subject to commission review and approval. I thought they were subject to the state's approval, that we actually don't have that much approval capacity for a cutting plan. True. That's true, Bruce. Yeah. Um, I don't even know how to describe what we do have in that capacity. Well, I mean, this is the commission's land. Sorry to interrupt, but this is the commission's okay. land. So it, it, what yeah. is happening on private land, it goes oh, okay. to the state, the state approves it, and then the CONCOM gets copied for comment. But for the, the land that the CONCOM has care custody and control over, I would say that in that case, the commission does have some okay. you know management oversight to say no yes or no we don't want it managed sure. that way yeah I, I got confused then about yeah okay. absolutely i agree with aaron 100 okay. percent. and then the other one was i was curious about promoting large white pine trees personally i would promote a much more diverse hardwood forest but is there a reason why that those large white pine trees are seen as something to promote they're critical for bears. But we're not specifically managing for bears. We're probably managing more for biodiversity. So I agree. And um, okay. I thought we were, so didn't you have mast species in here too? Yeah, it says produce hard and soft mast, large yeah. pine trees. It and seems oddly animals. specific. I mean, bears aren't listed. They're not critical. They're not a focus of anything else we're doing. It it fits it fits beautifully with our mission, and uh, in many cases, when somebody goes to the woods to cut, they cut big trees. That has been that has been a problem, and white pines are critical for um, are critical. But as far as insect diversity, oaks are critical. So it, it says they're included here in mass production trees. But then we specifically single out white pines, which just seems kind of odd. Well, maybe it's because they don't produce mass. They don't they? I mean, they have seeds that squirrels eat. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't, we're I think we are we're dabbling in perfection. Okay. I, and, and I, I think just removing it and because it's covered under hard and soft mass. I would leave it, please. What about large trees. I agree, large, large, large mature trees. Yeah, yeah, large mature trees. No, I want to leave white pines. Did you write white pine, Alex? Yeah. But I think we have a majority that wants large. Well, how about I have a suggestion? Large mature. What, what's the um, problem with white pine? It's not a problem with white pine. It's just. I, I think they're equally as valuable as a big mature white oak. It, that's not excluded. But it's, it's just, it, I think it's the singling out of one species. So I, yeah, that's what it is. Um, it is a singular species that is that is that is critical. And I, I really think let's send it to the commission. We have an opportunity to get comments. We will get this back. We can talk okay. about it again. That's fine. But it's we're now over the half hour. I, I brought it up. I yield. Let's send it to the commission and see what they say. That's it. Thank you. For me. Sounds good. So if we could eliminate the yellow highlighting 
and Aaron, if we um, do, we need a motion to send this to the commission. I don't see why. I mean, if everybody's comfortable with moving it to for their review, I think that's fine. Okay. And would you also eliminate uh, all of the word processing artifacts except your comment? The strikeout, not highlight, and so on and so forth. We don't need to send that to the commission. You want me to eliminate, Alex? Or it's just right here. Um, if you the track changes, yeah, in track changes, get rid of for all the formatted stuff. Like that, yep. It's just neat, and that's terribly distracting. I I suggest letting her do this offline and move yeah, to the there we go. next topic. And then up at the top, up at, up at the top of that file. We need to just either eliminate the submitted to the subcommittee and reviewed by the subcommittee or add that it was reviewed by the subcommittee on this day and the decision made, blah, blah, blah. And all that stuff in the head air. You can, um, I just soon, I don't know whether it's noise what she's typing now um, is probably more important than what's in the heading. So I would suggest that we eliminate what's in the header. Thank you. You got that, Aaron? Yes. Can you eliminate the header? What's in the yes. header? Yes. Yep. Okay. Am I still sharing? No. No, okay. you took it down. Yep. Okay. So moving along to hunting, um, I actually thought forest management would be easier than hunting. Um, I sent out a bunch of stuff. Um, Michelle, I spent quite a bit of time tracking down questions you had about how, for the, how far things shoot. And I sent that out in, um, in a file called... Uh, I think it's rules and regulations or something like that. And I also included a bunch of mass wildlife stuff about um, tree stands, which you had a question about. There's a bunch of stuff in there about where you need landowner permission that would apply probably to the, to the commission. So I don't have something queued up to send to the commission. Uh, Bruce? No, I, I'm listening to you tell you're ready. Your, to... hand, your hand's up. I was just getting in the queue. Okay. So I don't have something specifically queued up, but there are, it seems to me, we got about three alternatives for hunting. Um, eliminate it completely from CONCOM land. That would be administratively simple. Um, disallow firearms, but allow bows and arrows, including crossbow, uh, including um, compound bows. I didn't track down whether Massachusetts allows crossbows, and I should have done that while I was on their website. I somehow recall that that's allowed for for uh, paraplegics but I'm not sure about it so I didn't write about uh, I just defined what a crossbow was and how far it travels um, so anyways they were, the alternatives are to, to propose to either eliminate it completely and change the website to eliminate it from those CONCOM lands that are heavily covered by the buffer um, or disallow simply firearms. And um, um, I don't have a preference. I don't have, I just wanna, I'm interested in what you folks think. 
Bruce. So I had a couple of questions because not being a hunter, I don't know the answers. Um, why is the minimum um, draw weight important rather than the maximum? Wouldn't you be concerned about damping down the power and, and capacity of a, of a, a cross? Of a boat? Because the state the, the state sets how many pounds of pressure is on the projectile. We're talking about a bow. Yeah. And like for turkeys, it's 30 pounds. And um, for deer, it's 40 pounds. So it varies depending on the species. And there's nothing about the maximum. And most oh, people... Wow. But it's hard to pull a bow forty pounds. Right, and I wonder. I wonder if maybe if you only had a twenty pound pull, that the there's more instances of the animal only being wounded. You can't be out there. You can't be out there with a twenty pound pull. Right, but the question is why? But because it's the, against the law. But why? Why is that the rule? I, I, if we don't know, we don't know. I was just a curious question, and then. Um, uh, I think one of the issues that might come up is near the at the very bottom of page two it talks about bl using blank cartridges. Yeah, that's and, retreating dog. That's, yeah, that's retreating. but is it fair to say that if someone was out there training with blank cartridges, people in the vicinity wouldn't know the difference between in terms of what they hear? Yeah, all I'm telling you is what the state allows. No, no, I, I understand. I was just trying to extrapolate into our own circumstance and yeah, just oh, I, I understand. This is all part of it. Yeah, I understand. Okay, that's it for that part. That you know, putting that page together, I I could have immersed deeper. Yeah, but that was about four hours of work. Oh, well, this was helpful to me just to see this the the framing. <clears throat> So, and I don't know if we're going to be ready to send something to the commission. Um, it would be, I would welcome the discussion on their part, but I don't have, like I said, I don't have anything drafted for your consideration. And this, this actually hunting actually fit inside a uh, larger policy. We just isolated it. Taryn? Just want to remind, I guess, on a, state law that if we do prohibit hunting in areas where it would otherwise be allowed by state law then we would have to mark the boundaries of the parcels where hunting is prohibited um so just in terms of a staff um yeah task yeah. that would be something that if we did do a townwide prohibition we would have to mark all the boundaries on those sites I can count on you to bring that up, but we do not po we, we don't allow hunting on all conservation land, and we don't post those where it is not allowed. Now, I don't know about uh, the posting rules for municipalities if putting it on the website is good enough, and I just didn't go there. Yeah, I just mean from an enforcement standpoint, I think like an EPO would have a hard time going after some like let's say for example we do a, a town-wide prohibition and somebody goes on to a, a parcel that's unmarked and somebody calls an EPO and says they're hunting here it's not allowed I think an EPO would have a hard time you know enforcing if the boundaries weren't marked just I understand the the sordid history with things being allowed and not allowed and properties not being marked it's just it's a state law so um, I will call Dave Unitas, who is a law enforcement agent for the area, or one, or one of his compatriots, and I'll ask him. But I don't think, my personal feeling is that the administrative hardship shouldn't be the reason for do it or not do it. It should no, be. It should I'm be, not, I, I didn't mean be. to imply that that would be the reason. I just mean it's something we should consider in terms of staff. Yeah, but you don't do it now, and you don't allow land hunting on certain parcels. So um, I don't know if the current practice is lawful and should continue. That's a whole other issue. Um, I don't know who came up first, Michelle or Bruce. Michelle? Yeah. Oh, I just 
in regards to Aaron's statement, it would apply to both making a blanket prohibition, but also the option number two, I think, was to um, not allow hunting on those lands, which we viewed as having significant buffers to trail. So that comment would affect many of our con our options, I guess, is my only comment. I'm not quite sure what you just said. So you presented like three options. One is outlawing altogether, um, re like basically reducing the, the which properties were, it was allowed based on the buffer overlay and then not allowing firearms. So Aaron's comment about posting would, it's also relevant to option two, which is changing which properties. I mean, it's already not posted, and so maybe it doesn't make a difference. I'm just saying that it's not just relevant to the all conservation lands prohibition. Okay. Bruce? So I have a question for Dave. Um, on a, if, if the point of view of the whole town is at, at a, on a contentious scale of 1 to 10, and dogs is 10, where is hunting? Um, in the past 10 or 15 years, Bruce, I would say hunting is a one or a two. It's really not, we don't, we don't get many complaints. We don't get many concerns, honestly. There, we, we had some, we had one individual last year adjacent to uh, the Brickyard Conservation Area. So they do, they do happen. I guess what I was going to say is, you know, part of this whole effort is to in my mind, and one of the reasons I pushed for this committee and, and the work we're doing is to reset. It was a chance to reset. You know, we've we've got a really good commission right now and good staff and great. Let's reset. Let's, let's look at what's happened in the last 30 years here. And, you know, my predecessor, Pete Westover, did an amazing job at acquiring so much land and 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 I haven't changed some things. And and this is one of them that has troubled me is are we clear? on our rationale for hunting, no hunting, what areas we allow, what areas we don't. So I think this is great to be having this conversation. Um, and whether we like it or not, the way it's been done, I think generally has worked out pretty well. A, knock on wood, we have not had serious injury. B, there's a pretty good understanding of where hunting is allowed on Amherst Conservation land and where it isn't. And I get it that, to make that better, we should be posting those lands that are no hunting. So I again I'll I'll just focus on the reset. I think I think it's a great time to review this, like we're doing with dogs and hunting, and say, ah, is this good or not? I am I am informed, more well informed by those buffer zones. And part of me, Alex, as you think about the, you know, no hunting change our areas based on the new information on buffers or the third option was no firearms. I mean, I lean toward using the buffers and maybe saying, hey, of the, I, I'm staring at your email from um, 95, I guess it is, Alex, where you, you, you have all the attachments and, you know, we list seven or eight areas where hunting is allowed and maybe three or four of those go away based on the um, we, we think there should be more safety for trails and, and, and hunting buffers. Um, so that's kind of where I'm leaning. Um, but, but again, I, I defer to the group, you know, and, and your wisdom on, on where we go. So I, I Dave, I also sent you a map today, uh, which is from New Hampshire. And it's yeah, of southeast New Hampshire. And it shows all the towns where New Hampshire has prohibited rifles during deer season. And I suspect it's a safety issue. Because mm -hmm. um, New Hampshire does allow rifles, muzzle loaders, in deer hunting. And um, I own both. Um, and I do, I, I have land in New Hampshire and it's not posted. I do allow hunting on it, um, but New Hampshire has taken a different view for its densely populated southeast corner of the state. And 
Um, that's mess and I made a note that Massachusetts does not allow rifles. It it does allow shotguns with a slug. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I offer it on what a neighboring state is doing. Um so I this is a case where I would really welcome the discussion by the commission and not letting the perfect get in the way of the good. I I I oh I would propose that we put some alternatives in front of them and let them talk about it. Um and this is a to me, we may not get many complaints and we may actually not have much hunting. I don't know. But um this is a substantial change in the way things have been. I think Bruce asked on a scale, you know, you say it's a two. I think in this town, if you put it up a referendum, uh, I have a pretty good idea where it would come out on the vote at the town level. Um, and I, I don't want to base our approach on what and anticipating what the town would do on a referendum. I'd rather do it based on um, <laughs> some um, legitimate basis, such as safety. Right. If I could, Alex, that's yeah, that's kind of where I was going. Um, and and yeah, I, I agree with you. If you put it out on a townwide referendum, my, my guess is. Residents would say probably no hunting. I don't know if that's where you were going or not, but um, but the evidence to date over the last twenty to thirty years is again the system has has worked. If we want to tweak it, if we want to restrict more areas to no hunting because of our new mapping that we've done with buffers, then so be it. But I I agree. Maybe we put it to the commission to discuss. I. I do worry a little bit. I think we need to frame the options very carefully because this conversation could be a very long one and, and we'll likely get some attention from others, which is fine, but outside of the commission. Every time, anytime you talk about hunting in the Valley, it it, it can be a hot button issue, so. Yeah. Um, okay, moving along. Um, and then maybe this, this isn't ripe to go to the commission. I don't know. We'll see. Aaron. So I think the last time we discussed hunting, there was some level of consensus among commissioners that if we allowed hunting on a given parcel, we didn't want it to be stated to some degree, like you can only hunt on the north side of X parcel, right? Because if we do that, it becomes really complicated to try to figure out where the boundaries that someone can hunt are and where they're not, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just looking at the map and based on the buffers, there isn't a single parcel that's not impacted by buffers to some degree. So if we're saying we don't want people hunting within say 500 feet of a trail, there is going to be prohibition on every single parcel somewhere. Um, and so I'm just putting that out there as fodder for this because like it, it will be become really difficult to enforce, I think, if we say you you can hunt on say you can only hunt on um in Lawrence Swamp. That's the only place I think that's really big enough and and off the beaten path enough to allow hunting. But you can't hunt within five hundred feet of a trail in Lawrence Swamp. Then it becomes very nuanced in terms of enforcement of that. So based on that, it seems like there's no parcels where there wouldn't be some sort of issue like that. Just an observation from looking at the map. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Well, I recall that discussion um, centering on simplicity, which is what Aaron was getting at. And um, I just, if it's that complicated, and uh, sorry, the other thing I think we need to emphasize more than once in this whole discussion, outside of this subcommittee is that this is about the conservation lands, not the whole town, because that crossing is, we have to remind people, we're only talking about one thing here, a, a subset of the whole. And that may enable us to be a little more easily simplified and maybe even prohibitive 
given that there's a lot of other things in town where it is fine. Yes, um, I don't have the map in front of me, but I thought that there were a couple sites that were barely maybe impacted. Erin, you're probably looking at it. Okay, there we go. Like those green ones next, is it a rail trail? So there's- These are all Lauren three... Swamp parcels okay. down here. Okay, so there are three parcels that are not entire like terribly impacted. I see the southern end of that southern one is, but again, like the five hundred feet is was not arbitrary, but it's it's ba it's based on the building setback, right? So if we said four hundred feet, and I I don't know it's reasonable, Alex. So I look to you for maybe finding on that, but. If it's 400 feet, does that clear that up? I mean, I'm just looking for options for that, keeping option two open. So is it, if, is it really, if we go with option two, that just excludes everything or are there places that are marginally impacted? And if we reduce that 500 foot buffer, then they're sort of in the clear. Yeah, uh, my, um, a comment, um, the 500 foot buffer has a basis. And to search for a buffer, which allows us to get the answer we want, is arbitrary. And I would, I, you could go to, you could go to two feet, two yards, to get the answer you want. Um, like if you said, I just want to eliminate half, or save half, and then I don't want to search for a method to get an answer we're looking for. I would rather start with a criteria and see where that leads us because that's that's that if challenged that that becomes our um our um our rationale i've got to step away i got a garage calling about my truck keep going so could could, could someone remind me where the 500 feet came from? Exactly what I was going to say. Um, and I, one of us needs to look this up because I'm pretty sure that there was a difference between the buffer for a building and the buffer for a trail. I think there is. And therefore, it's entirely possible that where it says hiking trail merge 500 feet, it's, at, it's 200 or 300. So I, this is <laughs> a question I've been asking for a while. And uh, I think what I, <laughs> what was said previously on the town website was 500 feet from a dwelling or 150 feet from a paved road. That was like the state, supposedly the state rules. However, I know somebody who recently went to a hunter safety training and they said it was 500 feet now from a paved road or yeah, 500 feet, I believe. So I was asking the question of that, but I didn't know the answer. Um, and I tried to do some research into it, but I couldn't get a definitive. Um, so maybe Alex knows definitively, but that all those 500 buffers were based on what I understood to be accurate from a paved road or from a residence. But the paved road thing, I don't claim to know. Um, it's, a, you know, it, there may be a different answer there. This is again, just based on a, trying to establish a quick visual. Mm -hmm. I I have in my hand right now a um, business card from Ian Sipak. He is an outdoor education specialist and hunting specialist in Massachusetts. Um, I met with him many months ago. You know, again, if we wanted him to come in and talk with us about hunting rules and regulations uh, from the state standpoint, I'm sure he would come. Um, but he is a hunter of turkey, um, deer, what else is there, uh, pheasant, grouse. Mm. So we have resources if if Alex does not know the answer. I, I feel like we got a little muddled in this before and we never had definitive answers on these these setbacks for the rail. Well, the rail trail may be more more clear, but these unimproved trails. Well, and I think where it got muddled, Dave, was talking about firearms and how far things go right. with fire, firearms, because 
I think that that was ultimately why we kept the buffers to try to say, you know, if somebody is doing this, like, let's say somebody's using a firearm to hunt on a piece of conservation land and they're within 400 feet of a trail, could potentially their um, discharge of their firearm impact somebody on the trail. So I think that those two things are where the lines got crossed. Um, Yeah, I agree with you. I I remember those discussions. Again, I'm not a hunter, but I know enough. I know enough to be about hunting to be dangerous. Um, but uh, but like, for instance, um, pheasant hunting, you know, I'm quite sure those pellets for pheasant hunting are not going to go 400 feet. So I think that's where we never had really complete answers, you know, as a group. Well, is, even that, with that. is that an option then for a different alternative, alternative four or D? Well, yeah, for instance, Atkins Flats, could you allow, could you allow um, pheasant hunting there? Would that be safe? Yeah. Maybe Alex can opine on this. Well, but Alex, just to summarize, I think, where we, what we did while you were gone, that we need more definitive information about the buffers distances based on the kinds of uh, hunting that's being done. And whether it's a road or a trail or a building, you know, and because that may yield a slightly different map that uh, allows hunting at certain places. And then where we ended right when you came back was, oh, well, maybe there's an option that says, well, we're only going to allow bird hunting and not for mammals or something that would constrain without completely eliminating hunting. So those are just things we discussed while you were gone. Yeah, no, I um, I understand, but I would rather not, I personally would rather not tinker with the buffer because when somebody comes in who uh, criticizes us in, 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 a, in a pro hunting way, I would like to cite that we're simply taking, off, taking the buffer from what mass law allows from buildings and stuff. So we have a basis for what we're doing. That doesn't mean that we can't allow peasant hunting or upland game bird hunting with dogs, even um, with a shotgun and and bird shot. But we could eliminate uh, the use of slugs. Mm-hmm. So that could be an option, Alex. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it took me a while to get there. Yeah. Uh, in your absence, Alex. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like 500 feet for pheasant or turkey or grouse i mean that is that is a long way yeah 500 feet well there is a a range down in Belchertown, i believe where neighbors have had plate glass windows smashed because of pellets coming from the gun range um where they're shooting clay pigeons and Mm -hmm. and um those are pellets they're and they're carrying a long ways with enough force to break windows. So, mm-hmm. but the gun range down in you know in Holyoke Range is very very aware of uh, how far pellets can go, and they put a limit on on size that can be used in their uh, skeet range. And I'm a member of that, by the way. Bruce, Aaron, I don't know who went first. Um, I was just going to make a suggestion that the commission consider something. Um, And the consideration is this. Say the only place the commission allows hunting is Lawrence Swamp parcels. And that the entrances to the Lawrence Swamp parcels be, be marked in some manner with signage that states hunting is permitted in this location so to warn hikers and so forth and then you know just based on sort of the density of trails and so forth on other parcels it seems pretty pretty thick to permit in other locations it just seems like it starts to get a little a little troublesome there so just a food for thought because it seems like lawrence swamp there are some issues with trail overlappings but there are trail entrances that could be marked and then there could be a designated location where it was permitted in town on conservation land. And then we basically say other areas would not be permitted. 
to consider to try to ne narrow us in. Okay. Um, I want to try and wrap this up. Um, Bruce. Yes. I'll just know, note. Maybe Michelle went first. I'm sorry, Michelle. No, Bruce. Bruce, go ahead. I'll just note that I think we still, we need more definitive information about the two prohibitions at the top of the Massachusetts on page one. One says 150 feet. At one point, we used 500 in part because it wasn't a hard big road, it was a trail. And we don't have a bullet that says about trails. So I, I think we need to have more factual information on what the state allows and doesn't allow in the law about the distances before we would know what to say on a on a placard at Lawrence Swamp. Well, what I gave you is it came from Mass Wildlife okay. well, hunting hunting regs. So okay. That homework's been done. What you've got is the distance from a road and the distance from an occupied dwelling. Then we need to figure out for ourselves how far away from the trail. Yeah. You know? Michelle? I just was at, wanted to get clarification from Aaron. When you say Lawrence Swamp, Aaron, um, is that one of those parcels or is that a collection of those parcels? It's these, it's the collection of parcels basically that are south of the bike path, but east of Southeast Street. Okay, so it would, saying Lawrence Swamp would include that one that's pretty much totally covered by a buffer. Um, This one here? No, up north up of that. Up here? Yeah. Yeah, so that's right, so this is right off Station Road. Um. When you come in south of Station Road, that's that parcel, and it's because of the trails. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Erin, is it possible to um, uh, name the parcels? We have a list on the website, but can this map be altered so that each parcel is is named? every parcel in the town of Amherst or every parcel? The red lines. Yeah, so those are already labeled. I, no, I mean, so that somebody can know in the upper right, oh, it says Bodick, and then Catherine Cole, Eastman Brook, okay, Atkins Flats, excuse me. You're absolutely right, but the Lawrence Swamp. Well, the Lawrence Swamp are sort of like <laughs> there's not individual names for each individual parcel. They're sort of a collection of Lawrence Swamp mm. parcels that we just refer to as Lawrence Swamp. Um, and those are interspersed with a lot of water department land where hunting is already permitted um, or allowed by the town. So that made me kind of feel like there's already people down there hunting. And so if we were going to designate an area, it just seems like a logical one to me. Um, and also like the most distance between trails um, okay so thank you um this it's five past one um and we will end at 1 30. i gotta drive to rhode island and i still gotta pack and blah 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 um it's gonna be a happy trip it's my birthday on saturday and i get to celebrate with my granddaughter and my daughter and um we're gonna go to the fire fireworks or whatever it is in providence it's gonna be fun anyways uh, i can't draw up anything in writing now and perhaps i could draw up something on sunday and get it to aaron for monday morning and um and and copy you guys and um put out some alternatives rather than this is our recommendation and and write up um, an explanation of what we've done from an analysis standpoint and use this map right here. And um, the downside of sending this to commission in the pro is that it's a larger public view. Scott does go, I talked to Scott about, does he sit in on CONCOM meetings? And what he does is he quickly scans the videos after a meeting and um and he has scanned the videos for this subcommittee and he just remembers the dog issue from years ago 
and thought, oh, this would be good for the readers. So, um, and by the way, I thought his article was excellent. Um, but if we bring this subject, he's probably going to write about it. So that's why I would like to have a pretty clear explanation of how we came up with the buffer size and at least for, send that to the commission. And um, if you guys think that it's premature to send it to the commission, I'm okay with that. I just missed the last commission meeting and sending something to them. I'm trying to get caught up or we're trying to get caught up, mindful of our deadline. And um, I'm, I'm open to your will, Dave. Alex, I think you're right. I think, you know, there's no question that if this is brought up at the commission level, I mean, we're bringing it up in a public meeting today, Scott can easily, you know, review this, this meeting. Um, but I do think if it's brought up in the commission meeting, we should, you know, be, be ready for a broader view. I guess my recommendation might be, I'm not sure if I heard you correctly, but if you were willing to create a, a, a brief narrative of the options that we've discussed today and bring that back to the next meeting of this group, I would love to okay. kind of process it a little bit. Have you come up with four or five options that we've discussed today, discuss them at the next meeting. And then we, I think we would be ready to bring that to the, the full commission. The other thing I was going to uh, just say is um, going back to Aaron's suggestion about Lawrence Swamp, Practically speaking, from an enforcement standpoint, from an administrative standpoint, a staffing standpoint, designating one area and not, you know, slicing and dicing and, and all these fine points all over town, to me, makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, it'd be much easier to post and enforce and educate and do outreach here. Here is the area that we allow hunting. Here is our rationale. Here, you know, here are the seasons by which people can hunt there for, for, for this species or that species. So, from a practical standpoint, that makes a lot of sense to me. So, those are my two comments. I'm, I'm. Well, I made clear where I wanted to wind up, and knowing I might not. <laughs> And I, I would never write something and submit it to Aaron without this group looking at it and say, yes, that's fine. So it does, if I wrote something on Sunday or somebody else wanted to volunteer and write something, that's fine too. But if I wrote something on Sunday, it would get to everybody, um, you know, when I go to bed, which is probably going to be around midnight. And then we got we got Monday and Tuesday and that's, that's kind of rushing in. So... I'm happy with what Dave suggested. Um, gives me, um, I'm in the middle of negotiating a bunch of land transfer back to Indians in Nova, the, the Brunswick, and that's taking up a lot of time. Um, so I'm sorry that I don't have this in a in better form for you. So I, um, I wanna give raise your hands if you agree with Dave. I mean, I I agree with Dave. I guess I'm still concerned about that parcel that's all blue and buffered being part of Lauren Swamp. Um, it, so it relative to your and Aaron's suggestion about keeping it simple and place singular place based. I just how would we, based on our justification for omitting other places, that one I guess is um, an outlier. I think we might be jumbling things. I think what okay. Dave was suggesting was we refine the discussion a little bit before we bring it to the commission. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, okay. He also talked about if we're going to allow it, have... Yeah, yeah, but I think that warrants more discussion. Okay. Um, just like we sh we got to discuss it more before it goes to the board, I think is the... Okay. So Bruce, hold on. But there, with regard to Waller and Swamp, there is one parcel... Uh, on the um, along the, the trail that has almost no buffer the best i can tell a lot of green and it's an identifiable parcel and if if there's an entrance to that um, maybe that's where dave was thinking of putting signs 
Then there's that one that's kind of shaped like a pistol uh, or a, a revolver with a long barrel going out and then the cylinder and the handle. Um, I don't know if that's an entire lot that has green in it. It looks like it. So that could be that could be open and they could be signed. And so from an administrative standpoint, that would be a lot easier. So I, I, I'm happy to draft something um, given, given, you know, coming back to this committee next time we meet, I'm not going to do it on Sunday night. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead, Bruce. Well, I've, I've moved away from what I was going to say to before we leave here, can we be really clear about when we're meeting in the future? When are the future meetings of this com this com subcommittee so we can you know, all we need to go back we need to go back to Tuesday and I need to talk to Aaron about um, um, we had talked about giving her uh, several agendas at a time to post or have available for posting it's just difficult to know you know a month in advance what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So, sorry, it relates to when can the animal control officer come to talk to us? Next time we meet. Well, we tried and it didn't work this time, so. No, she was already, I sent out a note, she has, okay. she's, she's in training in Palmer that she had already paid for. And I just. Yeah. And she was not near her calendar when she said she could make it. Okay. Can, you, can we just restate the date? So um, she can she can be with us next time we meet. And I, okay. um, but that's a whole other topic. Can we button this one up? Right. Bye. So it's agreed that something will get drafted for this committee to look at, and. Um, for the next time we meet, which will be on a, on the the normal Tuesday, and uh, I'll put an agenda together for Aaron. Aaron, what is my deadline for posting that next meeting? The I would need to get it by Thursday, the twenty sixth at noon, um, to post it so that we could meet on Tuesday the first. Okay, so there's no reason. I know pretty much what we're going to talk about. I can get it to you before the 26th. I actually need to post it by noon. So I can get it to yeah. you. Okay. What day of the week is, is the 25th? That's Wednesday. That's our meeting day. And I think that's why this has been so challenging for both of us is like we have a meeting and then I've got like my follow up. Okay, so from how, about if, how about if I get this to you this coming Monday? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that date will be 21, 22, that's the 23rd. Okay. Yes. The agenda is going to look a lot like this one, even though we don't get down as far as we'd like to. Okay, are we done with that? And so far, just for summary, we're going to postpone this discussion on hunting. We're going to have something to review in writing for our next meeting. I'd like to go for an hour and a half at that next meeting. And I'd actually like to start going it to two hours, but I think that probably really stretches it for Michelle. Um, Just me. Yeah. Excuse me? Okay. I mean, and I Dave. think other, yeah, I mean. And Dave. But I I just get nervous about where we are on the calendar. That's all. We got a, we got a ways to go. Um. And um, let's see. And we have agreed to send the first topic, forest management, to the to the commission. And we need to set a comment uh, deadline um, for that. So, what were we giving them? A week? We had been giving them two weeks, I think. It need the comments need to come back for. Our, our meeting. Okay, we can give them a week. I mean, maybe we should see if people can do a week. I think that was the issue last time. People just um, 
Maybe in the agenda, Aaron, when we list this, we could like give them like some warning that we're going to be asking for comments due in a week. Like it's so, incorporated into the, yep. I mean, if we're giving it to them by the 25th, that means that they, if they have two weeks, they'd be getting it back to us by the 9th of um, October. And then we would have it in time for the 15th, which is our following meeting. And we've got other things to talk about in between like dogs and hunting. So, I mean, I do, other folks did say a week wasn't enough time. Um, so I think giving them two weeks to look at it would, you know, at least for now, I think that will be, that will work with what we're trying to wrap. Yeah. I'd be comfortable giving them a week and offering extensions for those who have a tough time, but we haven't, we've only been getting comments from Rachel and, and Andre did give us some comments. So, but Rachel's been pretty consistent. Yeah, Dave. I apologize. I got to run. I have a staff member retirement party that I'm part of coming up. So I've got to run with just okay. 10 minutes left in your meeting. So see you soon. Let, me, let me just switch the dogs yep. real quickly. Carol can come to our next meeting. And I'll say that the numbers that I got from the town clerk on the number of dog licenses sold I have no doubt but what that data is accurate in terms of the numbers sold. What I'm concerned about is that there has been a decline in the people registering their dogs. And that's one way to explain the, the, the drop in those numbers. Uh, so we got an, we got a, an enforcement. Uh, I talked to Carol on the phone about that. And she said she knows of, I think she named 25 dogs that are not registered. Mm. So there's, uh, 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 I, uh, I'm going to talk to Carol about the things we, I've already talked to her about some of the things we want to talk to her about, and I'll cue her up again, but, um, and, and I'll send out a list of suggestions. And so thank you for your time. Um. Carol, Carol's not as able as she used to be. She tells me she doesn't crawl under porches anymore. Uh, she doesn't, she doesn't help people get skunks out of traps. She teaches them how to do it. And the police officers help her when she can't do something. So she's 80 now. I, that's probably uh, personal information that I should not. Uh, anyway, she told me that's how old she is. So her, she's, very willing to do her job, but she doesn't do everything she used to do. Thank you. Bye, Bruce. I'm, I'm interested in number six before we end. Say it again. I'm interested in item six on the agenda before we end the suggestion. Okay, go ahead. I suggest that we divide up the topics among ourselves and write do whatever research is needed, write a draft proposal of what it should be, and have them ready when the time comes on the agenda. Because they seem like they're simple, they seem simple, but at least um, we have a, a jumping off point and not asking Alex to write every a draft of every single one, although I may yield to him on beavers. But I, I'd be open to taking okay. one of okay. these. Who wants to take camping? I'd like Michelle to pick the ones that are easiest and best for her, and I'll pick the others. I'm not looking at it. Thanks, Bruce, for the dibs. Um, what are what are they? Just if someone could read them. Beavers, and I already have that pretty much done. Camping. System for identifying encroachment. Periodic report to the Commission on the Condition of Trails and each unit of conservation land. That's kind of like the citizen group that we talked about mm -hmm. and compatible recreation uses. How about Michelle, if you come up with the, uh, do the citizen group trails, the trail committee. Sure. Okay. So that's, that's in my summary, which you already got. Um, 
Can I ask a quick question about the beaver thing? Um, I know, Alex, you've done a bunch of research on state laws pertaining to beavers and scents and stuff around, but I think what I, what I had in mind or what I think the policy discussion was going to be was when and where the commission allows trapping of beavers and for what reasoning on conservation land, um, like sort of a more, you know, for public health and safety reasons or danger of damaging roads or that type of thing. Um, it, have we gotten to that? Because I don't remember that we've, okay. We've never talked about beavers. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I, I did. Remember. I put some together, some stuff together in preparing a talk for Amherst neighbors. Okay. So I did a bunch of homework for them for my talk with them. And that was about wildlife in our backyards. Oh, 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 oh gotcha. Okay. All right. I was getting mixed up. Yeah. It strikes me that the system for identifying encroachment and the periodic report on conditions are related. And so I'd be willing to work out something that combines those two. And obviously camping and recreation are also related. So that could be one one little memo. Well, Michelle does a lot of camping. I thought maybe she'd leap for that one. Yeah, well, I took my sign. I can do camping. I think that's kind of short. If okay. I think the encroachment one is going to be involved and probably you'll need to talk with Aaron about that one. Yeah, you know, and the, the camping thing, I mean, the town has done a, at least Dave has done a prohibition on camping in Amherst for a variety of reasons because of tent encampments and trash and, you know, damage caused by campers. So I think like that one has been pretty simple, but it's really just to circle back and make sure the commission's okay with that. And yeah. there's so, while we're on this topic, I, I kept a record of things we've worked on. Aaron has it too. So um, um, next week, um, how about if I go through what I've got and think, come up with what I think is done, talk to Aaron to make sure we agree and right. see if we can't put a bunch of stuff together that's ready to go to the commission. Sure. Okay. Yeah, because we kind of jumped around. Okay, dogs. Uh, we've got uh, not much time left. I um, um, I have not been personally been able to go through the comments we received by Rachel. I read her comments. I did not have a chance to look at Andre. Um, and I think it's going to take a while for us to wrestle with some of her suggestions, particularly with regard to um, uh, the f I, particularly with regard to her suggestions. I'll just leave it at that. Um, did we receive any other comments? Just Andre and Rachel? The comment that Jason made in the meeting, which basically said, I'm in, you know, my my only concern is that we not have rules that are not enforced or enfor enforceable or enforced. That was his comment. Yeah, well, that goes to the entire policy document. <laughs> um, so the way I would the way I would set up the next meeting is invite Carol to come at the beginning, at the top of the meeting, out of courtesy to her. <sighs> And any conversation with Carol uh, uh, is, I'm expected to be fairly protracted. Um, so I will spend at least a half an hour with her, if not 45 minutes, as we get into the suggestions on what she might do for us and reporting and, you know, the record keeping for incidences and all that kind of stuff. Registration of dogs. Um, it may even take an hour. So I'd like to cue her up for the to appear before us first and try and put a time limit on it, which will be tough. And then spend the if we could split the hour and a half between Carol and actually dealing with the comments we've received, 
Uh, does that sound reasonable to you? Yes. Yep. Okay. And I, I would hope that we could have something to go to the commission um, in addition to that. That'll be a little tough, but I'd love to, I just feel a very strong need to be sending something to the commission as a result of every meeting. I don't know what it would be yet, but it'll be something. Michelle, you, there was something you said you wanted to make sure it got there, and it sounded like you wanted it to go pretty quickly. It was, uh, I'll have to look back through your emails, but maybe um, rule, rules and... Oh, um, or just our rules and regulations. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like a summary, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. But I know we started out with trying to just approve that. So it might be at the end when it's all consistent with all this background stuff that we go there. So another question that's going to come up, um, I think Rachel raised it, is should there be a primer, like an introductory paragraph at the top of each one of these rules? And we've talked about that. So we're, we're probably not going to get through that discussion today. But this came up a long time ago about what is each one of these actually going to use, use for. And, you know, like Aaron said, or oh, we're going to take it out of the document and post it in a e kiosk. And so therefore it needs to have some introductory thing. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know when an introduction to a particular policy is warranted or not, so we need to grapple with that. And then I'd also like to talk about the schedule once we get this all done, because it's my understanding that once we get all done at the end of the calendar year, the next thing to happen is, um, assuming the commission has voted on everything, is to hold public hearing and get comments from the public. And then that's process. But don't we have to have the comments before the commission votes? Excuse me? Yeah, the the commission would approve it during a public hearing. So I think that's what what Bruce is getting at. So like when we hold a public hearing, you take public comment and then at the end of the, when the hearing is closed, you would vote to approve the document based on potential changes or edits. But don't we have to go through a public, it, it's, a, it's a change in our rules. Doesn't there have to be a public hearing just for that right any anything any rules and regulations governing conservation land requires a public hearing so the whole land use policy would in my opinion require that we post it make it available for the public to review and hold a public hearing to take comment on but i'm saying i think and i think what bruce is saying is the approval process is the hearing so we, we're going through this administratively to get it as final as possible. That final version will be what we share. We put it through the public hearing process, take comments, might make some final changes. And then as part of the public hearing process, the commission would then close the hearing and approve the document at that time. And then at that point, it'd be in, a, in full effect. So the comment, that, that comment period you're talking about, we give them 30 days or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think... Yeah, I think that's reasonable or whatever the commission thinks is reasonable. Okay. It is one thirty-one. Thank you, folks. I will say enjoy enjoy the weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks very much.